The world is made up of different people, different races, different colors, different religion. We all need to live in harmony, in peace with one another. But in the past, unlike today, the world was divided in race, in color, in religion and in so many different ways. Even today, in the recent past, we must have heard about George Perry Floyd, I Can't Breathe movement, how he was murdered by an American policeman, a white policeman, just because he suspected Floyd to be a thief as he was carrying a big currency note with him. The poem we are going to discuss today, I know where the caged bird sings, throws light in the past history of how the black Americans or the Afro Americans were treated by the whites. The poet herself, Maya Angelou, had been through this and she tries to bring out the tussle between the less privileged and the better privileged. The poem gives expression to the feelings of these black Americans, rather of all the oppressed people in the world. Obviously, it deals specially and implicitly with the problems related to race, gender, slavery and freedom. It refers to two birds, one trapped in a cage and the other free, swaying and flying with the wind. The encaged bird stands for the black Americans and the free bird for the white person. The poet makes it clear that the encaged bird or an enslaved individual may be physically restricted and restrained but cannot be stopped for singing and dreaming of freedom. A free bird flying with the wind has complete freedom and chance to fly again at will. No such freedom is available to an encaged bird. Its dreams are entombed, but it does not give up singing or dreaming of freedom. Thus, the poem gives us the message that hope lies eternal. I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings is a powerful and meaningful poem that has a universal appeal. The poem is both simple and complex. Its underlining concern for freedom is simple to understand, but its structure, being metamorphical, is a bit difficult to decode, unless you have a clear background of the circumstances in which the African Americans continue to live. There are two birds compared and contrasted in the poem, the caged bird and the free bird. The caged bird is a metaphor for the black Americans whereas the free bird stands for the white person. The bars of the cage which put restrictions on the encaged bird can be identified in human terms as racism, sexism and powerlessness of the victims. This imprisonment behind these bars is unnatural. It produces the response of the song that takes such forms as struggle, self-affirmation, self-expression for freedom. The freedom of the free bird is naturally envious in contrast. The poem opens with an image of a free bird flying with the wind in a beautiful orange sky in the evening. He continues to float in the wind over the stream and dips his wings downstream in the gentle sunlight. He can claim the whole sky as his own. 
On the other hand, the cage bird, a metaphor of course for an African American or for an oppressed person, is in rage. His wings are clipped and his feet are tied. His condition is such that he can hardly move and have a glimpse of the beautiful sky. It reminds us of the image of the bird in Dubner poem that strikes the beak against the bars in rage and is wounded and still he does not stop singing. The bars or restrictions which are mostly physical in nature can never suppress mental flights for freedom. The song of the caged bird is heard far and wide. The free bird who has total freedom can go on another flight with another wind and can have a satisfactory look on fat worms waiting for him to devour. He can claim the sky as his own. On the other hand, the encaged bird stands on the grave of dreams. This reveals the poet's own dreams. Discrimination and racism formed the bars of her cage and she could not achieve all that her white counterparts were able to achieve. Despite the fact that the encaged bird cannot even move freely in its narrow space of, of his cage, he cries out for freedom and equality. His song for freedom remains irrepressible. The poem, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings by Maya Angelou. A free bird leaps on the back of the wind and floats downstream till the current ends and dips his wings in the orange sun rays and dares to claim the sky. But a bird that stalked down his narrow cage can seldom see through his bars of rage. His wings are clipped and his feet are tied so he opens his throat to sing. The caged bird sings with fearful trill of things unknown but long for still and his tune is heard on the distant hill for the caged bird sings of freedom. The free bird thinks of another breeze and the trade winds soft through the sighing trees and the fat worms waiting on a down bright lawn and he names the sky his own. But a caged bird stands on the grave of dreams, his shadow shouts on a nightmare scream, his wings are clipped and his feet are tied, so he opens his throat to sing. The caged bird sings with a fearful trill of things unknown but longed for still, and his tune is heard on the distant hill, for the caged bird sings of freedom. The opening stanza captures the natural beauty of the sunset. The free bird, suggestive of a white American, leaps on the back of the wind, that is, he flies and sways with the wind in the evening against the orange sky. He has the right to claim the sky. As he flies, he dips his wings downstream. Here, the poet makes the reader participate in the delightful experience of freedom of the bird. When there is no restrictions, every movement becomes blissful and joyous. The poet wants us to understand the advantage a free person, a free person has over a person who is restricted either through gender discrimination, through color discrimination, or through racial discrimination. A free bird leaps on the back of the wind. The very first two lines suggest to us that the free bird is at an advantage for is leaping from somewhere, from somewhere where he is already at a better position from where he can leap, from where he can jump onto. And he's jumping onto the back of a wind that will carry him through, that will help him to move ahead, that will assist him to move forward until and unless 
this current ends and there when he reaches a stream he's got the freedom to dip his wing in the orange sun rays and since he has no challenge he has no competition at all for him he can dare and claim that the entire sky belongs to him because there's nobody else who is there who is there to compete with him we move on to the next stanza but a bird that stalks down his narrow cage can seldom see through his bars of rage his wings are clipped and his feet are tied so he opens his throat to sing this stanza brings in sharp contrast to the condition of the encaged bird his wings are clipped and his feet are tied so he can hardly move in his narrow cage and see through his bars of rage he is in anger but is helpless he only opens his mouth to sing but no one can stop him from doing so thus while the free bird can enjoy the full sky the encaged bird cannot have a glimpse of the sky in another word a person who feels restricted as a result of any kind of discrimination prejudice or powerlessness cannot enjoy the fruit of freedom and equality he can only he can only yearn for full freedom and struggle for it in different ways when the poet says but a bird that stalks down his narrow cage what does he mean by his narrow cage by this he means that a person who is angered creates a cage for himself creates restriction for himself it is his bars of rage it is his anger that acts as bars so his wings are clipped his wings are clipped meaning to say that he has not been given the same freedom as the person who is in advantage the person who is being favored his feet are tied so what else can he do what else can he do he can do the things which is easy which is the only option and that is to sing out his song the third stanza the caged bird sings with fearful trill of things unknown but longed for still and his tune is heard on the distant hill for the caged bird sings of freedom here in this stanza the caged bird is shown to be afraid of many unknown things but this fear does not prevent him from giving expression to his dream his dream of freedom his voice is heard far and wide as he sings of freedom here the poet makes it clear that the voice of the oppressed people their longings and aspirations cannot be suppressed no fear can stifle their voice rather this voice is now heard in distant countries stanza 4 the bird thinks of another breeze and the trade wind soft through the sighing trees and the fat worms waiting on a dawn bright lawn and he names the sky his own this stanza takes us back to the free bird making the difference between the two birds starkly clear the first bird can think of another flight in another breeze and can enjoy the sighing of trees he can find his own food he can claim the full sky as his own on the other hand it is obvious that the encaged bird has no such freedom or right the fifth stanza but a caged bird stands on the grave of dreams his shadow shouts on a nightmare scream his wings are clipped and his feet are tied so he opens his throat to sing
this is again a shift to the encaged bird and his helplessness the bird in the cage stands on the grave of his unfulfilled dreams and his movements are restricted he can only cry out like one who has had a nightmare this is a frightening image a person without freedom can only act abnormally for the state of captivity is not normal in the last stanza the caged bird sings with a fearful trill of things unknown but long for still and a tune is heard on the distant hill for the caged bird sings of freedom this is the repetition of the stanza 3 it emphasizes again that though the encaged bird has never experienced freedom he still sings of it his song is heard now far and wide and his longing for freedom and equality cannot be dismissed as a distant voice in another words the poet feels that the voice of the black americans cannot be suppressed for long they are made for freedom and despite all restrictions and suppressions they would not relent to continue to struggle for freedom which is their birthright the poem <clears throat> the poem does not follow any set of scheme of form or structure the line lengths vary according to the rhyming required and each segment of the poem has different number of lines if you have noticed that stanza 3 has been repeated for the sake of emphasis to emphasize on that particular freedom that the black americans therefore the third stanza has been repeated again as the sixth stanza the rhyme scheme used in this poem is irregular haphazard and faulty at the most it is sporadic only lines 9 and 11 in the first two stanzas employ rhyming words for example cage and rage in the fourth stanza again there are two rhyming words breeze and trees other rhyming words used in the poem are trill still and hill as also heard and bird the two obvious metaphors used in the poem are for the two birds the caged bird is the metaphor for the african american while the free bird is the metaphor for a white american the contrast between the states of these birds reveals that about the unpleasant plight of the caged bird and is used to make the reader aware of the tragic story of the oppressed the poet has used some object of nature as symbols the sun the wind and the hills stand for freedom power glory only the free bird can enjoy these things which are purposely denied to the caged bird there are many beautiful images which convey the idea of freedom and repression beautifully in the first stanza the flight of the free bird in the evening sky is a beautiful visual image as is the image of the caged bird with the clipped wings and tied feet in the second stanza the poet describes the natural beauty of the sunset the free bird suggestive of the white american leaping on the back of the wind that is he flies and sways with the wind in the evening against the orange sky he has the right to claim the sky as he flies he dips his wings downstream the sun the sky and the wind symbolically represent freedom free space and power respectively while the free bird can move freely how does the caged bird behave and why does he behave so 
the caged bird can hardly move in his narrow cage and he sees through his bars of rage he is in anger but is helpless he only opens his mouth to sing as no one can stop him from doing that thus the caged bird cannot have a glimpse of the sky but he behaves in this way because his wings are clipped and his feet are tied what do the bars of rage stand for the caged bird is kept in a cage which is made of metal or wooden bars these bars prevent his free movement when he is denied free movement he gets angry here it stands for restrictions and discriminations in the poem the caged bird can hardly move in his narrow cage and see through the bars of rage so he is angry but helpless now in what way is the encaged bird different from the free bird unlike the free bird who has freedom to dream and be happy the encaged bird lives on the grave of his dreams that is his dreams are dead every day every day he dreams perhaps he dreams of his freedom with the rising of the sun he sets into a new dream world he sings a song for again a freedom but when the sun sets his dreams are dashed and it dies it is on these dreams that he stands and dares to dream again and again and again and sing for the freedom he is sure that some day his voice would be heard far across the high mountains in distant land and people from different countries will come in support and help him to achieve his one and only dream the dream of freedom